Hello and welcome to the May webcast for Emily's Walking Book Club in which we are going to be discussing The Little Virtues by Natalia Ginsberg. Um, this is a really remarkable book. It is life-changing, I would say, in some respects, and Jonathan Safran Foer said that as well on, um, on Radio 4. It's, um, it's, I mean, that's quite a strong word and on our walk on Hampstead Heath, some people were a bit like, did you really actually mean that it's life changing? Has it changed your life? And there are certain aspects of it, which I, I really do feel that have radically changed my perspective on things. Um, can you call it life changing? I suppose you could at least say it's perspective changing. This is a collection of essays. I very rarely read essays and I rarely choose them to discuss in a book club because I feel it's quite hard to talk about things without a kind of clear narrative structure. And it was a bit of a challenge, in fact, to, um, to pull all our thoughts together and draw out themes, but I feel it's a challenge which we rose to. And it was also really lovely to hear how in this collection of 11 essays, there were some in particular that um, really stood out to people. Um, I've sort of annotated my contents page. Um, the first essay, Winter in the Abruzzi, I'd say is a really amazing place to start. Um, Natalia Ginsberg was an Italian writer. She also worked in publishing before that and she was she was from a Jewish family, well, half Jewish, um, Jewish enough. Um, and her, she was, it was a very kind of, she was in the sort of left wing intellectual scene. Um, she was married to um, a political dissident, Leone Ginsberg. And um, so the reason I'm saying all this is because Winter in the Abruzzi chronicles her time spent in exile in the south of Italy, um, where she was sent um, because of her husband's kind of fas uh, anti-fascist tendencies. Um, there's a really incredibly powerful bit, which maybe I will read out to give you an idea. Right, so all through um, this essay, she kind of writes about the poverty and what it was like and how there was only one shop and, um, you know, half people had head lice, or it's on my mind at the moment because my children are always getting them. Um, so she talks about this sort of real poverty and deprivation of life in the Abruzzi with, with an amazing sort of feeling of colour and detail. And then um, I'll just read these last two paragraphs. So he's come right at the end of the chat of the essay. There is a kind of uniform monotony in the fate of man. Our lives unfold according to ancient, unchangeable laws, according to an invariable and ancient rhythm. Our dreams are never realised, and as soon as we see them betrayed, we realise that the intensest joys of our life have nothing to do with reality. No sooner do we see them betrayed than we are consumed with regret for the time when they glowed within us, and in the succession of hopes and regrets, our life slips by. My husband died in Rome, in the prison of Regina Coeli, a few months after we left the Abruzzi. Faced with the horror of his solitary death and faced with the anguish which preceded his death, I asked myself if this happened to us, to us who bought oranges at Giro's and went for walks in the snow. At that time, I believed in a simple and happy future, rich with hopes that were fulfilled, with experiences and plans that were shared. But that was the best time of my life. And only now that it has gone from me forever, only now do I realise it. So it's this incredibly powerful pivot that is turning this whole description of um, this sort of awful time into the best time. Um, because of the tragedy of her husband's um, death by torture. So I'd say that's pretty life-changing, this this way of re radically rethinking your life and, and knowing that with hindsight you would see things differently. The other essay which for me felt incredibly radical is the final essay which gives the 
it's titled the whole collection, it's called The Little Virtues. I'm just going to read the first paragraph now. First, so we had the, la the last paragraph of the first essay, now we're having the first paragraph of the last. Um, and this is um, her essay full of how she, what she feels we should tell our children. It says, as far as the education of children is concerned, I think they should be taught not the little virtues, but the great ones. Not thrift, but generosity and an indifference to money. Not caution, but courage and a contempt for danger. Not shrewdness, but frankness and a love of truth. Not tact, but love for one's neighbour and self-denial. Not a desire for success, but a desire to be and to know. I just love it. I love this kind of passionate tone, quite strident, this sort of, this is what I'm telling you. And um, there's a fantastic essay about Natalia Ginsburg by um, Lara Feigl in The Guardian, where she describes Natalia Ginsburg. She, she says, if Ferrante, meaning Elena, Elena Ferrante, is a friend, then Ginsburg is a mentor. And you very much feel like you're being taught something in this collection of essays. Each one's got you know, almost like a little mini sermon or a lesson. And some people found this tone a bit much. They wanted to say, no, I, you know, I disagree and you're wrong. And, and why are you telling me this? And found that a bit of an obstacle. Others quite liked this feeling of being told and even felt it could be more didactic um, and quite and felt totally able to kind of come back against her if, if they disagreed. Um, but I do think that there's something about that tone which very much makes it, a, you know, writer to the reader. It does make it quite hard as a reader to come alongside the writer and sort of empathise, really, or, or share a viewpoint. Um, and I think there's also sometimes a, a slight coldness in this writing. Um, which again creates a bit of a distance, a bit of a, a gap between the, the reader and writer, which does bring problems. I think sometimes it can come with, um, with a real benefit. So for instance, she writes a couple of, of these essays are about her time spent in England in, I think it was in the early sixties. Um, and she writes quite coolly about you know, how awful the food is in England, for example, or um, how how we all take ourselves so seriously, these kind of things, which um, which brings a sort of humour. Um, again, some people in the group found them a bit rude. And, um, and I do think it's interesting that line between humour and rudeness, you know, to make, you know, but does a joke have to have an element of truth in it, which can, feel a bit uncomfortable um, to the person on the other side. Um, you see, those, those essays, that one's called La Maison Folpe and the other is what's called England Eulogy and Lament. Those are kind of interesting to have a, an Italian's take on London or England at that time. Um, there's another brilliant essay called My Vacation, which is about her writing. And it made some people think of Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own. It made me think a little bit of Deborah Levy. Um, this, this real kind of wrestle with what, what does it mean to write? You know, is it something, I mean, she's saying, you know, you can't choose it. It is literally, it is my vacation. It is, um, it's, there's no escaping it and it, it's, demands, um, which is a, a brilliant take on it, I felt. Um, again, there's something in these essays there, although they do teach lessons, I don't feel they're particularly clearly argued always, and um, it's quite hard to distill her points into sort of clear lessons. I mean, actually, having said that, there are loads of lines that, you know, loads of people in the book club would say, oh, I just wanted to take that line and write it on the wall and take that line and write that on the wall and cut that bit out and stick it up here. So there are loads of great lines and moments, but I think the overall sense of the essays isn't crystal clear always. And 
perhaps that's why I so often return to this to try and puzzle my way into it a little bit more to to look a little bit deeper into what she's saying and um and I think that's quite a productive mess not mess but productive you know it resists being too tidy it's um it's it's more of an exploration or grappling with these these big ideas and my vacation is another one human relations she's talking about all the different relationships we have through our lives different types of friendship um relationships with our parents again she resists just saying this is how it is and she she tries i think she really tries to to explore it a bit more deeply in a, in a bit more non-linear way so yeah it, it was a, a surprisingly difficult one to discuss um perhaps because of the sort of muddle of it and and the fact that there are all these different essays um a few of us did have did have some sort of nitpicking sorry to bring that back um sort of queries really with with the publisher and the way it's been published you know we all wanted to know why it's been split into part one and part two like what what's the theme what what's the difference and there are a couple of instances where she writes at length about certain people and there's no explanation in the text as to who they were you know i had to go and look them up um maybe this is an intentional choice or her kind of instructions it would be good to to know why um and it felt like in general it would be nice in this edition to have just a bit more context um you know there is an introduction and a preface but perhaps there could be a, a little bit more just the occasional asterisk to say you know this essay was about Cesare Pavese who committed suicide or this one is about her, her second husband um so that would be nice but it was funny I think we all had certain issues with this book and it's not a perfect book but it is a brilliant book and it is it really does make you rethink things and and question things and and really just see things from quite radically different perspectives so um so yeah I would I would really recommend it and I would also say if you um are interested in Natalia Ginsburg when you enjoy this book do read her novels and novellas. Dawn Books are doing an absolutely brilliant job of publishing them very beautifully um, and br bringing them all back into print in English, which is, yes, it's so enriching to our, our literary life. Um, so yeah, this was the May book for Emily's Walking Book Club. We meet once a month for Walk on Hampstead Heath. We have a wonderful newsletter which goes out every Monday to give you more information about the book. And um, the idea is you can be part of this massive community of readers. We're currently at 1,500 members um, all over the world, all reading together. So yeah, do sign up. You just have to search Emily's Walking Book Club. Um, do let me know what you think of the book. I would love to know your thoughts.